Hi, George here, and what I'd like to talk to you today about is suctioning sequencing of the patient's airway, especially if the patient has an endotracheal tube in place. So let's kind of look at the different types of endotracheal tubes. If you have a conventional endotracheal tube like this one, suctioning is fairly straightforward. If you assess the patient's chest and they need to be suctioned, you'd simply suction down the patient's endotracheal tube with either an open or closed suction catheter. Then, you'd assess the patient's pharynx and determine the need for pharyngeal suctioning. It's a little bit different if you have a patient that has an evac tube that's inserted into their airway. So if we have an evac tube like this, the suction sequences is probably going to be very different depending on where you work and the needs of the patient. So always assess the need for suctioning. Listen to the chest, check the endotracheal tube out. If it looks like your patient needs to be suctioned, well, let's tracheal suction them with the appropriate amount of pressure for that patient age group. Now, if they happen to have pharyngeal secretions, make sure you suction out the patient's pharynx. But again, the evac catheter, what do we use that evac catheter for? Remember, the evac catheter on that tube goes all the way down and sits just above the tip of the cuff of the endotracheal tube. So its whole purpose is to remove secretions from above the cuff when that cuff is inflated. So how would you incorporate that into your suction sequencing? Well, again, it's going to vary depending on where you're working. It's certainly going to vary on the very upon uh, about the patient or on the patient and as well as the type of equipment you have and how many suction sources you might have. So to give you an example of this, if you assess your patient and they need tracheal suctioning, for sure, hook up your suction tubing to your suction catheter, suction out the patient with the appropriate amount of, of uh, suction that's required and remove all those secretions safely. If you assess the pharynx is full of secretions, you can suction out the patient's pharynx. Now, this evac catheter, again, its whole role is to remove secretions from above that cuff. If the institution has a policy where the evac catheter is hooked up to continuous suction, what they'll probably do, because this is what we do in our area, we will hook the suction tubing up to the evac catheter and then run our suction level at minus 30 millimeters of mercury, somewhere in there, a really low constant pressure. So technically, if you've got that evac catheter hooked up to your secondary suction source, it'll stay on continuously and gently aspirate secretions from the patient's airway that are sitting above the cuff. So that would negate the need to pharyngeal suction depending on the patient's position. So if you happen to have two suction sources and you're lucky with that, one suction source could probably be used and hooked up to the tracheal catheter. The other one would be hooked up to your evac catheter. The one suction that's hooked up to the tracheal catheter would be interchangeable. You'd use that for suction the tracheal as well, you can switch over to pharyngeal if you need to do pharyngeal suctioning. The secondary suction source would be hooked up to the evac, again, running at minus 30 millimeters of mercury with constant aspiration. So let's give you another example. If the patient's just recently been intubated with the evac tube and you want to suction out their airway, assess the need for suctioning on the trachea first and suction out their trachea. At that point in time, you can go to your evac catheter and suction out any kind of secretions that are sitting above the cuff as well as possibly some that are sitting in the patient's pharynx. Now at that point in time, if you only have the one suction source, you've got two options. You can either leave it on the tracheal suctioning and use it from there, PRN, or you can leave it on the evac catheter and leave that there consistently. So it all depends on how much equipment you have and uh, what the need for suction is for your patient. So I guess what it comes down to it is assess your patient, determine what type of suctioning you have to do on your patient, and then what your equipment is that you have that's available to do that suctioning. So two suction regulators, two suction sources, one would be for pharyngeal and tracheal, the other one would be for your evac catheter. But again, the variations to suctioning are, and the sequencing of suctioning is gonna be dependent on a lot of different factors, so it may be completely different the way you do it in your regions. But just remember that safety of the patients you're most concerned and ensuring that your patient has proper bronchial hygiene by suctioning out the appropriate part of their airway with the appropriate source at the appropriate pressures. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you like this video, thumbs up for like. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. But please give me some, some suggestions on how it can be improved. And if you get a chance to, please subscribe to my channel. Hope you have a great day.